garden gals and guys. It's Steph with Tiny's Garden and today is an exciting day. I feel like I say that often but especially today. It is the great greenhouse getaway or at least that's what I'm coining it. Today is the day when I'm moving a ton of my plants which you can see have taken over my kitchen because I moved them upstairs this morning to the greenhouse. It is that time where a lot of these cold hardy annuals want to start to be moved outside so that's what I'm doing and because our basement is carpeted and the greenhouse there's some mud by it I don't want to trail a bunch of dirt onto my white carpet in the basement so I'm moving them all upstairs first before I go in and out in and out so let's go get the last bit that I have and then I'll show you everything once I get it outside let's do it you can see I am making space it's perfect timing to do this because they're ready and I need extra space. So we're going to take this out yet. These are pansies and violas and those back there are Iceland poppies. So those will go. Bells of Ireland, these will go out too. And then I've got a bunch of my transplanted Lysianthus. I'm gonna take at least part of those. Okay, everything's upstairs. I've got 18 trays to move out there into the greenhouse. I'm going to double check it's cool enough. I already have two trays out there of Iceland poppies and pansies that have already been acclimated and started hardening off that live out there now. And I put those out into the sun and the wind. So they're getting more of those elements. So woo, let's do this. I'm going to take you around inside so you can see real quick what I'm moving and then we'll get the ball rolling. Starting with the tray I had the worst germination with. This is the day and night snapdragon, Costa apricot, and Rembrandt snapdragon, which the Rembrandts actually have done really well now. This out of everything I have besides one Iceland poppy tray has done the worst. So I probably shouldn't have started with this, but keeping it real. So that is that. Then better news over here. We have great germination with these snapdragons. These are snapdragons, Potomac snapdragons. The apple blossom is the one I struggled with the most out of all the Potomacs. So I just actually sewed more of those today, but still better than the other tray. I'm happy with that. Sweet pea jungle. Look at all these sweet peas. I need to go in and thin these. I'm sorry, not thin. I need to go in and pinch these today as well pinch them back to about two true leaves and that way they'll be very bushy. Uh, some of these, especially in this tray here, if you can see this whitening, didn't react well to when I fertilized them once or maybe they got too much or too little water. I'm not sure, but I'm going to go through and clip some of that off and let the new growth take over there. But really excited for the sweet peas. They should still hold on well. And I have more. So I also did some in some recycled pots here. And those actually look really great. Da! Snapdragon City. Look how gorgeous. One in each cell. I love it. This is the Opus 3 bronze and Chantilly bronze and Madame Butterfly bronze with white. Over here, we've got some Bells of Ireland on this side. And then these are all of my Fox Club. So... Some spotty germination, but I'm still happy with that. This is the first time I've started these from seed. Chantilly bronze up there. Again, Potomac apple blossom and Costa apricot. Just didn't have as good a luck with these guys, but they should grow on and, and do well outside, I think. Right by the burger buns and the English muffins, we have some stock and some Lysianthus I'm going to take out. This is my cool annual tray. I did a video on that. Bachelor button stock and calendula looking gorge. And then up here on top of the toaster oven, I have Dusty Miller and Iceland poppies. See if I can get you a better look there. The Dusty Miller is starting to turn to its dusty color there. I think that's so cool. This was also spotty and I actually did have good luck on one of my trays of Iceland poppies I'll show you outside, but I got a big bag of Bacco, Bacto. I'll find it and put it on the screen, seed starting mix, and it was awful. And I got a huge bag of it. So don't get this kind of seed starting mix. I think it really affected some of my seeds and germination, but we'll still put out what we have here. Oh, we're not done. 
one more tray in the entryway over here of stock. Let's get this stuff outside. And it begins, stock coming in. Snapdragons. Cool tardy animals. And come violas and bells of iron. More snapdragons. Filling up in here, filling up. Sweet peas. More sweet peas. We gotta adjust for room here. Taking up to the other side now. Some more. Last ones. Okay, we made it. Everything's in. Let me give you a final resting spot uh, shot. And these will stay here for the day at least. I might do the night too. I think our night temperature is supposed to be 40 or 50. Pretty nice for all of these that can handle some cold. And I will take them back in if it gets too cold or it drops below freezing because they're not used to it yet. But they're starting off the hardening off process before going outside by coming out into the greenhouse. So we've got my circular pot, sweet peas, snapdragons along here. Stock in the back, Dusty Miller, Iceland Poppies, Calendula, Bachelor Button Stock, Bells of Ireland, my, these are violas, and Bells of Ireland, and Foxglove, more Sweet Peas, the Sweet Pea Jungle, Stock Lysianthus, and more Sweet Peas. These are the ones that need some tender love and care here. And if you can see that temperature thermometer, it's 74, so about the same as the basement. The vent is open and the door is open as well. I'm interrupting this program right now because it's now the night of moving everything out for the great greenhouse getaway. And I had to grab my headlight and grab a heater because I checked the temperature again for this evening and lo and behold, it's supposed to get down to freezing, 32 degrees. <gasps> but it's going to be okay instead of bringing 18 trays of things back in which takes a decent amount of time I am just going to use a space heater which I did a little bit last year just not on the first night of moving everything out and try and keep the temperature around 50 degrees so I'll check it before I go to bed I wanted to go to bed now but Guess I'm staying up a little later. And I've got a thermometer in there so I can go in and check. I just don't really want it to drop below definitely not 40. And if it's supposed to be 32, I'm just not confident it'll stay warm enough in that greenhouse. So hoping to keep it around 50 now with that heater in there. I think that's important because that's the whole idea is when you're moving these things out and hardening them off is you want to do it gradually. So you know, I'm okay with that 20 degree difference and that's probably even a bit risky, but I think all those plants will be fine because they are cold hardy, but I'm not okay with like a 30 plus degree difference. I think that's going to be too much on mainly a first night of moving them out for both most of those plants. So that's my thought process behind that. I wanted you to know what's happening the night of because sometimes things go awry. I thought it was supposed to be much warmer tonight. I wouldn't have to worry about it. It would stay around 50, if not higher. And surprise, it could freeze. And I suppose I should answer the question of when are these things going to move out of the greenhouse and actually into the ground? Most of these, especially things like Snapdragons, Stack, are going to go out around April 25th. Today is March 20th. So a little over a month from today. So that's why they'll have enough time in that greenhouse to really acclimate acclimate to the weather in there and then I will start in a couple weeks to a few weeks start bringing them out of the greenhouse during the day so they get more wind and more of the natural air elements to acclimate to so another little hardening off phase you're just doing that the whole time I know a lot of people don't have a greenhouse or a cold frame to take them to so you're going to want to be much more delicate than what I'm doing I've got a little extra protection with that greenhouse you would want to take it really slow, a couple hours at a time the first day, bring them back in, lengthen it the next few days to a few hours, four hours, back in, 
half a day back in over the course of the week, lengthening to where you get to the point where you can actually have them outside. So if you don't have a greenhouse structure and you're in my zone, which is zone 5B, you're definitely probably not hardening off yet, but that time will come soon. So be patient, be patient. So that's what's happening. And now we'll go back to the regularly scheduled programming. And we've done it. The great greenhouse getaway has commenced. I hope everything's going well with your transition outside if you've started it yet. If not, good luck when the time comes. It's always a little bit of a finicky process to make sure that our plants stay happy and healthy, but definitely worth it. Comment below and let me know what you're doing in your gardens right now if you started transitioning any out and subscribe to follow along with my channel. I'd love to have you here. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.